Hello everybody, and today, this video that I'm, well, what I'm going to be talking about today is something that has been on my mind recently, based on influencers, I guess you could say YouTubers or streamers, that have a platform that absolutely don't deserve a platform at all. And what I mean by that is usually they are people that are genuine pieces of shit, people that are awful, people that have, that have done actual crimes, and have not, you know ever been arrested for it because there's nothing really anyone can do about it because law enforcement never actually goes with something like that but it's still wild to me that there are so many people so many youtubers that still have a platform still have fans and can still profit off of their platform and this video i'm going to be talking about some of the people now i'm going to be um sort of having it in three different sections one, the first se section is for people that are not pedophiles, but are still horrible people. The second one is only specifically for one person, pedophile in training. You'll see what I'm talking about later on. Then the last one is obviously pedophiles, who are also horrible people. But still, pedophiles are horrible people. And they still have a platform, which is crazy to me. Mostly it's streamers, but there are also YouTubers. But... It's going to be three of them, specifically. I know there are more, but many of them have been deplatformed already. I will mention it later on who I'm talking about. But anyways, three different sections, because obviously it's not fair to compare horrible people that you know aren't pedophiles to actual pedophiles. So here we go. Get ready for my, well, my video of all of these horrific and horrible and pieces of shit YouTubers that still have platforms and shouldn't have platforms. I still don't know why. Alright, so let's start off strong with someone that you probably know, Jack Doherty. Now, Jack Doherty is a 20-year-old influencer, I guess. He makes videos on YouTube and also streams on Kick. Of course, Kick. The streaming website with the most deplorable streamers. Now, Jack Doherty is probably the least... I would say... How would I say this? He is definitely way less shittier than compared to the other people that I'm going to talk about. He's still a massive piece of shit. I still hate him. He's so fucking annoying because of how annoying he is because his entire personality is based because of him living throughout only on the internet because his whole childhood is just the internet making videos and everything and just profiting off of being a massive piece of shit to people in public. And one of the things, an example is... Uh, a few months ago, maybe he walked. A, he made a video walking around the streets, sort of instigating people, making himself look like a dumbass and be annoying as hell. And when people actually got sort of defensive and pissed off at him, and we're gonna like you know fight him or something, he backs away and sort of like hides behind the security guard, just being like, "Oh, what are you gonna do now? What are you gonna do now? Huh, huh, huh?" And walks away as if he's so fucking cool, and he was the one that won that. Even though he's such a loser and is actually such a pussy. And it's it's kind of funny too because later on in another video, he actually got punched even though his security guard was not paying attention. He got punched in the face, which was absolutely funny. And probably I would say deserved. I wouldn't say this if he was a kid because kids can be stupid. But he's not anymore. He's an adult, so... I can tell him right now, he should go fuck himself, and he does not deserve a platform at all because of how much of a piece of shit he is. He's absolutely annoying. His entire personality is just being being a piece of shit. That's all it really is. And nobody likes him at all. And I guess that's the thing about him is he has now portrayed himself as just only making money by being a massive dick. And that's the, that's the way it has to be for him because he knows that that's the only way he's going to make money, just being an asshole and getting all the attention of being exposed for being an asshole. And he shows it because he flexes all his money. He's like, oh, fuck all them haters. Look at all the money I got, all these women and everything, all the money. And there have been times when I tweeted saying, I'm so glad in life that even though I may not have hundreds of thousands of dollars, I'm so glad in life that I was never born as Jack Doherty. I'm so happy about that because at least I have human emotions and actually give a fuck about people out there that have not done shit to me at all. So, 
that's that's one thing the first guy for not a pedophile obviously he's not a pedophile and but just a horrible and piece of shit person now the next people that i'm going to be talking about they're definitely com- like way worse compared to jack jack is just a massive piece of shit and he's just an asshole but he definitely hasn't done any illegal shit from what i'm aware at least none to the point where it's fucking massive like an actual dangerous crime so moving on to the next person second person on the not a pedophile but a massive piece of shit is sniper wolf now sniper wolf is should come to no surprise someone that no one should like at all and is an absolute asshole and massive piece of shit now based off of her videos her videos are actually atrocious because if you just look at her videos right now you can see that all of her videos are basically the exact same thing with really barely any transformative i guess way like to make it transformative content all she really does is sort of steal content like people that have made on social media and just say oh wow that's crazy oh my god oh, did you guys see that ball right there oh wow oh that's cool yeah this one time that happened to me that that's really it and not only that but around quite a while ago i think a year ago she was recently into some drama where Jack's Films, someone that was extremely critical of Sniper Wolf and calling out her bullshit and how much bullshit she is as a person by sort of exposing everything like not showing, not giving any credit, no emotions, not even really being transformative at all as a React YouTuber. And there's a way that you can actually be good as a React YouTuber. You just have to have your own way and make it actually transformative and make it enjoyable when you're reacting to shit and don't be like someone like i don't know let's say for example xqc the many times that he's been called out where live or live xqc reaction and he's not even in his room example like that but there are many ways that i've seen that react youtubers can be good for example one that i like is jay schlatt i guess he used to react on tiktoks that were absolutely insane or just funny and he made them actually funny he actually made them funny reactions but sniper wolf sucked balls at that and she basically profited off of all of that for years and jack's films called called out her bullshit and it's clear that she was actually getting really pissed off and sensitive about it being called out of some shit like that And because of that, I don't know what the fuck she was thinking, but later on, she actually went on her Instagram and doxed him, basically. Doxed him, showing a picture of his house and saying, Jack Sims, let's talk. Who the fuck in their right mind does some shit like that? It's absolutely insane to me. I made a video of this a while ago, but I'm bringing it up again because I'm going to talk about this later, but it's still crazy to me that sniper wolf someone who doxed another youtuber and put their life at risk their family's lives at risk still has a channel what is the excuse what is the excuse of still having her in youtube i don't understand what the fuck youtube is thinking or was thinking with the decision they made for you for sniper wolf's punishment And the punishment, all it was, is not demonetizing her channel, just demonetizing her videos, like future videos that she makes from now on. That doesn't mean that her videos are demonetized forever. They're going to get removed, or the demonetization is going to get removed sooner or later. I don't know if she's still getting money from videos. I've tried to look at her videos recently. I don't see any ads, but that still doesn't mean that she's fully demonetized forever, from what I'm aware and it's still crazy to me because the right decision for something like this is to ban them let's say for example it was i don't know some piece of shit or like small content creator docs another person and maybe doc sniper wolf i'm pretty sure i'm confident i'm not trying to make like a gender sort of excuse i'm confident that that person that specific person would be banned immediately Especially since Sniper Wolf has been the person that makes YouTube the big bucks because of how many subscribers she has and how much like millions of views she gets from her fucking videos. 
So it's absolutely insane to me that she basically got away with it. There was not, nothing happened at all. No, I think he said that he was going to sue her, but I don't know what's going on with that. I don't even know if it's still going to continue. I don't think anything happened. But she's still uploading to this day. I think her recent video was only three days ago. So it's wild to me that someone like her is still getting still has a channel that's all i'm saying she still has a channel why does she have a channel anyone that doxes someone should not have a channel at all and should be reported because of that because you're putting people's lives in danger and it's an actual fucking crime but nothing happened all she had was have her videos demonetized her recent videos i don't know for how long they didn't say how long but yeah that's all it was so yeah Sniper Wolf, a massive piece of shit, and a doxer. And it's absolutely insane to me that she still has a channel. It's not right. It's fucked up. Nobody that doxes anyone should have any sort of platform for themselves. Because you never know what could happen what they could do again. So, yeah. Welcome, Sniper Wolf, to the piece of shit list. Next person on the not pedophile, but a horrible person list is illuminati now this is probably someone that you might not know it's an it's sort of a commentary documentary youtuber that just made a made documentary videos based on different sort of subjects topics things important like i don't know PETA stuff like that the um, what was it called the pyramid scheme stuff like that that's what she made and basically the way she made videos was, was not really being the person of like researching everything actually researching and putting a lot of like finding a lot of evidence herself not all she really relied on is like articles and things that were already basically set for her so she can just say everything and have it as a video that's all it really was now a few months ago i'm pretty sure a few months ago or maybe a year probably a few months ago she was trying to call out another YouTuber, like sort of a legal YouTuber to, uh, known as Legal Eagle, that she tried to expose him by saying that she, Legal Eagle basically tried to plagiarize her by one of his, one of Legal Eagle's developers by copying some transitions, like paper transitions, or not paper transitions, paper sort of wallpapers or something like things in her videos that many people use and the highlighting text effect saying that she was the one that basically invented that and she thinks that they should have been called out for that shit like that basically saying that they're plagiarizing all their videos and plagiarizing specifically from Illuminati. obviously no one fucking believed her and called out on her bullshit and because of that she actually deleted that tweet and you can see the two was deleted. Maybe you can find it somewhere on the internet. Someone screenshotted it. But yeah, she was being caught out on her bullshit. And because of that, she started a fucking massive like dive into finding evidence on how much of a terrible person she is. How petty she is. How crazy she is to her ex-friends. How much of a piece of shit and just horrible person trying to hold grudges on people that they never even did anything to her at all she was absolutely horrible to her friends like for example trying to find some dirt on them for things that they did over a decade ago when they were still like young as hell and obviously didn't know any better and try to use this as an example that they are a horrible person and maybe hoping that they get the acknowledgement for spreading all this and finding the truth. But because of that, all the shit that she's been exposed of, she tried to make a sort of response of everything, but she was really not really apologizing to much and only really apologized for the legal ego shit, but later on tried to bring in more allegations to her friends saying that they were defending a pedophile or allowing pedophiles to be in their discord server specifically slick i think it was uh my bad i'm not trying to i'm not sure if it was him but yeah she was bringing in more allegations and not really being truthful and just trying to seem like more of the less sort of shittier person and more of her friends and later on actually her friends started debunking those allegations and showing more evidence that she was a horrible person and because of that she basically went dead quiet 
So for a while, she kept quiet. She didn't say anything. She kept uploading videos for quite a while, and I think still is to this day. Trying to ignore all the allegations on her and all the criticism and everyone calling her out, hoping that everyone would ignore her and later on just move on and nobody would care. But with something like this, yeah, people don't forget. And she noticed that too because eventually, like the pussy she is, she hit her comments. She started hiding comments on every single thing. On her old community posts, on old YouTube videos, everything. No matter what, no matter where you try to go on her YouTube channel, on any of her videos, she hid her comments so no one can, you know, write comments about her. But even before that, from the recent videos at the time that I saw, everyone was still bringing it up every time. And she just constantly kept trying to hide it and ignore it. But it didn't work because now her views on it are horrible. All, her, all the views on her videos are absolutely terrible completely awful she's actually just fallen off but for someone like this that's been called out for being a massive piece of shit and a horrible friend and being such a massive narcissist that you think that people are copying you off of things that were already a thing a long time ago and you think that you're the creator of it a person like that that still exists in a in youtube i'm saying uh that has a platform like this where obviously people are using every day millions of people are using it how is it fair that she has a channel but many people have been banned for smaller reasons and it's insane to me she's one of the people that absolutely do not deserve a channel at all at all because she's just a massive piece of shit who tries to hide and run away from all the allegations and not to mention also, the new things coming out, where because of all the shit that has been exposed by her friends, ex-friends, she actually later sued her friends, basically suing them for, I guess, de defamation. And from what I've heard, it's sort of working in some way. She had like a small vict victory on something, but it's absolutely insane to me because she's not sorry at all. She's not sorry at all for the things that she did. That video she made of the allegations and saying that she apologizes or whatever. She's not sorry. She only cares about what little reputation she has left for herself. She's a massive narcissist and a massive piece of shit that does not deserve a platform at all. And many of the people that are in this list in this list do not deserve any sort of platform not on youtube not on twitch not even on kick not on rumble nothing they don't deserve anything but yeah that concludes this part illuminati massive piece of shit we found a dead body yeah. good old logan paul of course i'm gonna be mentioning him in a video like this obviously he's not a pedophile but he's a massive piece of shit and what i mean by this is obviously a long time ago what happened with the suicide force video that definitely had some red flags and i don't know why i had any hope for him sort of redeeming himself after doing some horrible shit like that making a video on a dead body in a suicide forest i thought he would actually redeem himself for a while and say like, okay he's actually cool now but no He's not cool at all. He's horrible. A horrible person. And what I mean by this is around a year ago or maybe a, a few months ago, he was making some game supposedly. Basically, the next person, next influencer focusing on cryptocurrency, of course. And his game was called CryptoZoo. And apparently it was just some stupid game where you would just get some crypto eggs crack them open get some stock fucking photos of combined animals and then if you want try to get better ones or it, it's in, it's confusing but if you want to talk want a more in-depth video i would recommend going to someone like coffeezilla or something that definitely way went way in depth on this and exposed logan paul for his fraudulent game supposedly because he said it was a game and it was so fun it's it's super fun but yeah, later on it was exposed that it was all basically just a scam. People didn't even get to open their eggs. They're just pointless. They don't get any money at all. They spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on it. And for a while, 
Logan went dead silent on what happened, like, the first few times, or first few weeks and months. He didn't say anything anywhere, no Discord, nothing. So people were basically just getting scammed. And for a while, Logan didn't do anything about it until later on when Coffee actually exposed it. And because of that, that's when Logan was like, oh, no, now I got to talk about this shit. And sort of started trying to... She, he made a video uh, trying to say that Coffeezilla was uh, just defaming him and spreading fraudulent claims of being a scammer. But later on, that actually backfired so hard because it was pointed out that he was going to sue Coffeezilla for def- defamation. Uh, but he backtracked on that because everyone basically called him out on his bullshit, especially hiring a supposed criminal and later... You know, that criminal going off with like over a million dollars and something because they weren't getting paid. The developers on it weren't getting paid at all. They weren't paying, they weren't getting paid jack shit. So, yeah, Logan was a massive piece of shit and for some reason decided to partner with other crypto scammers. I don't know what he was thinking with partnering with crypto scammers. And he said, Why would I partner with these kind of people? And he's like, I don't know, I'm just an idiot. No shit you are. Who the fuck partners with crypto scammers? Are you an absolute idiot? Are you, like, stupid? Like, is that stupid brain or something? Who does that? If you're going to make a cryptocurrency, then make it with people that aren't exposed for being crypto scammers. Because then you're just no better than them. And Logan Paul eventually backed uh backed away from that and saying oh i just want to say coffee so that thank you for exposing everything and like thank you for everything and i'm doing my best on refunding all the people that were you know spending money all the victims which was a big fat lie because he didn't even refund everyone he barely refunded any money around maybe like a million dollars people have like in total maybe more than a million way more but just a little tiny bit a million dollars that's all it is so he still hasn't paid it to this day, at least all of it. He hasn't paid all of the money to the people that, you know, lost thousands of dollars. And later on, CoffeeZilla made another video basically sort of talking about how Logan Paul was involved in another thing. He wasn't specifically the part of it. He was a co-owner of some organization or something. And apparently that organization or something was being exposed for, you know, scamming people or something i can't really think of everything right now but uh when that shit happened with the um, crypto zoo logan paul and coffee seemed like oh yeah at least we're we're trying to help out people and everything and i thought and i'm guessing coffee thought the same thing later on when he was trying to get some info on what's going on because logan paul was sort of involved like a co-owner of that organization being exposed and because of that, he was trying to get some info. He's like, Logan Paul, can you hook me up with someone so I can like talk to them? You know, get some info and so maybe something's wrong or something. And he's like, sure, man. No response for a while. No response. Nothing. And then later on, he gets a lawsuit from Logan Paul. And the thing that sucks is CoffeeZilla was paying for an insurance company or something, hoping that he won't have to pay anything for the lawsuit, like no fees or anything. But Coffee actually got scammed himself, so now he's having to rely on, you know, people buying merch for, you know, his clothes, uh, merch, or his Patreon. And it fucking sucks, because Logan Paul has not said anything at all with this shit. All he did was just send a lawsuit to him, and now Coffee is probably going to have to be spending thousands of dollars on legal fees. Well, Logan Paul... He probably won't have to care, like, it probably won't be much of a problem for him at all, because he has millions of dollars. He has, he's partnered with Prime, obviously, he's the co-owner with KSI, so he has millions of dollars to spend. While Coffee, obviously he doesn't have the millions of dollars, like Logan, has to sort of rely on other ways to, you know, get the money to get good lawyers. So, yeah, Logan Paul is an absolute piece of shit, and he has not changed at all. He's a horrible person. He has scammed his fans. He has made a video making fun of suicide, like, victims or whatever, and is now trying to sue, or is suing, the journalist who exposed, well, obviously he's not suing him because of CryptoZoo, he's suing him for something else, for defamation of something else. 
but he he's trying to sue the journalist who exposed all this shit that he did and didn't care about so yeah logan paul is definitely one of the worst human beings on earth he's absolutely evil and does not deserve any platform and it's wild to me that he has a contract with wwe and is also still sponsored with prime it's sad it really is he's an absolute piece of shit and should not be admired at all no one should admire a scammer someone that made fun of suicidal victims nobody at all so yeah logan paul definitely up there with the massive pieces of shit and absolute awful people that do not deserve a platform at all no matter where <laughs> i'd love to see that little soy boy come up here and mess with me you all all right moving on to the next section just pedo in training i decided to give it to Sneeko himself specifically because I feel like it's more relatable for him and I feel like making a section just specifically for him now obviously he's not a pedophile right now maybe not right now who knows but he definitely is getting um the sort of ideas now as a pedophile he's getting the ideas who knows because for me he's absolutely one of the worst people out there on a streaming platform because he streams on rumble now there's a reason why he obviously doesn't make videos anymore on youtube because he's banned which is a good thing classic youtube w i would say but thank god that he doesn't because the ideas that he sort of speaks on out there is absolutely horrible let's not talk about let's talk about actually first thing that everyone obviously thinks of when they hear of sneeko is he's a massive cuck obviously because he enjoys watching his girl get fucked by other guys so no surprise there from someone that has pedophilic ideas and then second he enjoys watching a movie for pedophiles if you don't know cuties so obviously that mu that movie is absolutely awful it's basically just hypocritical with saying oh we're implying that kids should not be sexualized while sexualizing actual kids so it's absolutely genius but sneeko says hell yeah love this video to death love the kids dude it, it's so good and you guys just don't watch the movie you just you guys just really need to you need to watch the movie to understand that not sexu sexualizing kids is bad and it's good too that they are sexualizing kids but i'm, I'm joking but still horrible ideas from there and let's not mention also recent things like defending a pedophile dr disrespect and it's absolutely crazy because of how much of a hypocrite he is because of the chris tyson tyson situation now what do i mean by him being a hypocrite so what i mean by this is back when the dr disrespect allegations were coming out obviously even me i was like it's i was having the idea of innocent until proven guilty because that's the idea that or the mindset that everyone should have because it's not right that someone is getting called out for horrible things without being able to give their side you wouldn't like it if that should happen to you at all i wouldn't for sure i would want to have my side at least spoken out before anything any conclusions happen and i was like okay um because the people that were calling him out like you know exposing this shit they seemed super fucking sketchy with their past but later on dr disrespect himself just basically confirmed the allegations by specifically any in one part saying individual minor but editing the comment instead of then later changing it to individual so basically he did talk to a minor inappropriately and it's not we don't know what age it was we don't know what age at all who knows it could have been 17 15 16 14 it's still a minor but of course sneeko comes out of nowhere again i'm guessing hearing of the confirmations saying that oh yeah um having that same bullshit argument of 17 year olds of course he's getting called out because he was sexually or sort of having sexual conversations with someone that's 17 years old 11 months uh, uh something days a few seconds that same bullshit argument every time to try to defend a known pedophile but later on when the ava chris tyson situation released and started showing a bunch of you know allegations evidence just proving that chris tyson is a pedophile basically sneeko of course changed his mind and started saying oh and what happened to all the energy of the people with the doctor's respect situation where's the where's all that energy at 
uh, why are you guys still defending this pedophile, uh, Chris Tyson? Now, it's so hypocritical for me because now, of course, on this situation, he's like, oh, fuck that guy. He's a pedophile. Fuck him and fuck the people that haven't said anything at all. And it's so hypocritical because he only cares about this situation saying that he's a pedophile because Chris is trans. If, if Chris let's say was straight and everything i know damn well he would pull out that same bullshit argument again and i know that he's transphobic as well because later on after he was like calling out you know all those streamers and everything for being a hypocrite i guess he made another tweet basically saying that transgenderism is an illness so yeah chris did not care at all about any of the victims for like from chris all he cared about was calling out someone that's a pedophile just because they are trans. He didn't care at all who it was that, you know, you know, was getting called out or whatever, that who the victims were and like we should support the victims or something. He didn't care. All he cared about was showing or proving that transgender people are pedophiles. He had been just spreading his transphobic shit and saying that it's a mental illness. When a matter of fact, I would say that Sneeko himself is a mental illness and he's a disease. Why do I say that? Because he spreads his bullshit to basically manipulative kids and, or people that just can't think for themselves and have to rely on some stupid ass pussy, I would say, a cuck out of all people. Listen to him, have him be the leader of the group and listen to him try to spread all his transphobic shit all over and having an example like chris tyson but then having a backtrack because dr disrespect was basically straight and he had that mindset again of oh but we don't know what his age is and of course he's getting called out dr disrespect is getting called out because he had sexual like conversations with a minor that was 17 years old 11 months and whatever but What's worse than that is later on, after that, he decided to have a debate with Charlie. And it's something that he actually brought to Charlie. Charlie did not know that it was going to be a debate. He thought it was just going to be some conversation. Now, what's crazy to me is that people cared more about the idea that Charlie had. Because the question for Charlie that Sneeko asked him was, Do you think it's right for kids to be able to transition into, you know, you know, trans, like transgender, and what I'm guessing Charlie thought was sort of like a hyperbole, not obviously cutting their dick off and having to do all that shit, sort of the slow transition of later being transgender, and then eventually when they are at the age, then they can trans transition into the other gender, I'm guessing that's what he meant, but obviously people didn't really know that, and basically tried to call him out on that shit, because obviously it is a sort of bad take of not really understood what he meant by that but later charlie backtracked on that or sort of like explained what he meant but people called him out more on that charlie called out more charlie on that than sneeko having the mindset of saying that as long as a 12 year old who is mature or any minor or something that is mature enough should be able to be with a 21-year-old adult, an adult, a child, who is not mature at all, is not mature, they're barely going through puberty, they are not mature at all, no child is mature until they are an adult, should be able to be with an adult, and disagrees with the age of consent, and that it should be the age of marriage, it doesn't matter, nobody should disagree with the age of consent, the age of consent will always be 18 no matter where it says in any state or country. No matter what it says, the age of consent is 16 on this state. Just because it says the age of consent is 16 or 17 or something like that, you, anyone out there in the world, should have a moral obligation to not fuck children. Because they are still in high school. They're not even done with high school. So you want to have sexual relations with a kid when they're still in high school and aren't even done or 
like you know probably haven't even planned out on how their future is going to be and probably could have their life ruined based on something that could happen something bad and you disagree that it should be the age of marriage okay well go ahead and live with iraq go ahead live in iraq then based on the new laws just release of the age of marriage now going from 15 to 9 absolutely insane i'm sure sneeko was absolutely thrilled hearing those and was probably moving there right now but it's insane to me that people called out more or were more pissed off at charlie having that mindset that he confused the question and later on having to explain what he meant more than someone sort of explaining or sort of accepting pedophilic mindsets that he disagrees with the age of consent and that as long as the minor is mature even if it's 12 should be able to be with an adult and it should be the age of marriage you are fucking stupid if you have this mindset at all and people the reason people only cared and sort of i guess agreed more with sneeko than charlie is because people out there are transphobic as fuck they're just using that example right there to spread their transphobic ideas because that's 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 just it. They hate trans people. And the thing with the situation with Charlie and Sneeko gave him another good example that oh look at this guy, he's uh defending or sort of accepting that kids should have their, their dicks chopped off, basically. Sort of just implying that, you know, the intensity of trying to make it sound more intense when saying kids trans should be able to transition at that age when specifically it was meant sort of in a hyperbole like sort of way like slowly transitioning into the you know gender you want obviously not instantly turning into the gender gender you want by like cutting off your genitals or some shit it's not like that but of course Nico used that example of his for that so so he could spread his transphobia and people obviously believing all that shit and it's clear to me because they're are still so many people out there that constantly believe him as like classic Sneeko W and everything. Charlie L. He likes he he wants kids to get their dicks chopped off or whatever. It's so annoying and honestly, it's so infuriating to me that someone like Sneeko still is able to have a platform. He is able to just stream on Rumble and spread all that bullshit everywhere for kids that just have no idea what they're thinking or like anyone that they could sort of look up to and they look up to Sneeko of all people someone that loves to watch a pedophilic movie someone that's a cuck loves watching his girlfriend getting fucked by other guys and has different mindsets of when a child is mature enough a 12 year old is able to be with a 21 year old and disagrees with the age of consent all of those examples just prove to me that Sneeko is a horrible and just awful person that does not deserve any platform at all and it is disgusting i would say obviously he's not a pedophile that's clear he's not a pedophile who knows no one knows if he is probably not but based on these ideas and mindset he mindsets he has it's not off the table honestly it may someday it may can it can happen i don't know but yeah sneeko is definitely by far one of the most horrible people on this list obviously besides the pedophiles that i'm going to be talking about so moving on to now the actual deplorable people that still have a channel to this day would you guys consider jacking off to be a sport i don't know about you motherfuckers all right starting off with obviously the most recent one the most recent pedophile at least on this list is dr disrespect of course the doc the two-time the legend the one who's always been up there i guess you know many people know him everyone mostly knows him every time everyone should know who the doc is honestly even if you don't know him you probably will now based on the allegations that were brought on him now in the beginning in that with the allegations i'm just gonna try to rephrase everything like you know uh, refresh everything from the allegations so an old uh twitch employee called out dr disrespect pointing out these allegations that the reason he was banned was because he was using the whisper message to sort of uh, talk inappropriately, inappropriately with, I guess, a minor or someone. And for a while, Doc didn't say anything until I think the next day later when uh, it was still debating if it's true or not. And I was sort of debating or hoping that it wasn't true. 
because I was like, I'm the guy, like, again, that's innocent until proven guilty. He's like, and then I would constantly see many people already assuming that he's a pedophile. And, like, and then the Twitch employee himself was pretty skeptical, or like, pretty suspicious. Because his past is really weird, based on the fact that there have been many tweets that were exposed of him using that situation a long time ago when he was banned before. That if this post or something like that gets uh, an amount of, I don't know, support or something, I'll give you guys the reason on why Dr. Disrespect was banned. And that's really, really fucking weird and like sort of selfish and just horrible and sort of ignorant why would you use this sort of situation if it was this allegation to sort of get attention for whatever you're trying to like you know advertise it's horrible and it's super suspicious he later went on and sort of i guess apologized on his behavior before but for some reason the way he was saying it was like some fucking riddle riddle me this shit or whatever so i didn't understand but later on the next day dr act Dr. Disrespect actually responded to the allegations, made a tweet, and the tweet is probably by far one of the worst responses ever made, because he basically just admitted it, that he talked to a minor, and because of that, uh, by accident, the first time he actually posted the tweet, he mentioned individual minor, so it was a minor, but then later retracted saying individual by editing the post, so he probably didn't mean to say that, but it was a minor. He basically just exposed himself. It might have, it might have sort of still been skeptical and like you know, still have two sides to it because we don't know what the age is and we still don't know. But he basically just admitted it. So now because of that and everyone and him admitting that, everyone just changed sides and just agree that he's a pedophile. He is. He used the whisper message on Twitch to talk to someone inappropriately. Who is a minor? Again, we don't know what the age is, so it could be anything. Who knows? There is no, like, in, there's no message. Like, no one has shown any of the messages, because I don't think anyone can even find those messages anymore. But there's no proof of any of the messages. But he basically just admitted it himself. So, again, let's say by chance, Dr. Disrespect just makes a video and completely debunks everything. If he does everything, like debunks everything, and it wasn't a minor, then I will absolutely edit this video and remove his part and apologize. Absolutely. I will retract all my statements I have made on him. I will. I promise. But based on it, he probably won't. Based on how arrogant and ignorant he is during that tweet that he made saying some cheesy ass lines like they can get rid they think they can get rid of me yeah right some like 1990s sort of vibe was like they think they can get rid of the legend <laughs> suckers or some shit like that but no and because of that he went on a vacation for a while and then later on maybe a month or two i think then made a tweet <laughs> one of the worst tweets ever as well of a picture of him where a camera is basically sort of showing a chess board well his side is chess and the camera side is checkers and dr disrespect is on the chess side and the camera side is checkers so i'm guessing he's basically trying to make us seem like we're kids like we're idiots or something but because of that it seriously backfired on him because now we're easily just people were easily just editing it like putting on the other side just like i'm a kid or something playing with kids or just many ways of interpreting that. Oh, you like playing with kids as well? And it makes sense why you would be playing with kids. So yeah, basically that. And he was getting flamed on it. And the tweets he made responding to some people shitting on him. Like, I heard you a pedophile and everything. That meme of Goku, I heard you a pedophile. He responded by some dumbass tweet saying, uh, Look at this idiot using a Kendrick Lamar uh, lyric shit of Not Like Us. I don't know what the fuck he was thinking. That's not even from Not Like Us. That was before it even released. It's just something that people say. It's just, you're a pedophile. So I have no idea what the fuck this dude was. And he's like, oh, look at the classic guy with the pronouns in his bio or some shit. He was using those shits to try to defame people or whatever. Try to put them down. But no one was, <laughs> no one was siding with him, honestly. And it's so hilarious, and it's so funny with the ways that he just tried to handle this situation. 
because he handled it extremely poorly and horribly. And I think what's wild to me is that obviously he still has a channel and he probably won't ever get deleted. I don't think so. I don't really think he ever will. Uh, he won't have his channel deleted or terminated, but he definitely should. I would say he definitely should have his channel deleted or terminated and not have a platform because he does not deserve it. Anyone who commits a crime like that does, has fumbled it. They fumbled everything. They fumbled any chance of them getting any chance to be able to come back. You fumbled it. That is the worst case scenario for any influencer to talk to kids, to talk to kids who are underage. It's done. You're done. So, yeah, Dr. Disrespect, definitely up there with one of the worst people of all time, especially because of how arrogant and ignorant he is with many situations like this, trying to seem superior based on how he tries to make himself and always bringing up how he's the two-time and everything. It's so annoying, and yeah, fuck him, and definitely deserves to get his channel deleted. Gone forever. Don't come back, honestly. All aboard the toxic gossip train. <laughs> and yeah Colleen Bollinger or as many people know from her alternate personality I guess Miranda Sings yeah probably the YouTuber with one of the the worst I would say one of the worst responses or apologies I guess from allegations as intense as sort of talking to a minor inappropriately Deciding to make a response by singing and playing a ukulele when your PR team informed you to not make a sort of response, but you said, you know what they said though, you know what they didn't say? They didn't say I could sing the song. Ha! Fooled you. They didn't say I could respond it with a little nice ukulele song. God, I'm PR team idiot. It's not like I'm paying you guys thousands of dollars to try to make sure I have the best response possible for any situation like this. But fuck you guys anyways. Anyways, if you don't know who Miranda Sings is, she was back then a sort of cringy ass um, YouTuber that had that annoying personality. Obviously, it was meant for kids. It's pretty obvious. It makes sense. And later on, though, she was being exposed for talking inappropriately, sort of having an conversations with the minor like asking for ass pics which is obviously serious allegations and people waited for obviously her response also citing both sides you know wait for a response innocent until proven guilty and she released that video and that video literally did not talk about anything saying um screw these haters and just going on this toxic gossip train that goofy ass song or whatever and she also tried to monetize it at one point i'm not sure don't quote me on that but yeah she is definitely someone that is not a really good person especially with the response like that i have no idea what she was thinking with a sort of response like that and i know for a fact that her pr team are absolutely like we're gonna lose our jobs it's already over because what was that I don't think anyone from what I've seen has ever made a response as worse as her because at least in some sort of way, they response a little bit of it. Like at least some way because they sort of take it, I guess, in some sort of serious way, even if it doesn't seem so, like they might just be faking it. She literally decided to make a song out of it talking about the toxic gossip train and that she made some mistakes which I seriously don't understand why anyone would make a response like that. So yeah, she definitely deserves a spot up here on the list of pedophiles because she basically is now. It's sort of confirmed. Well, I guess it is, but again, if anything, somehow just releases that she wasn't a pedophile or anything, I'll retract everything, but... She is, basically. She sort of just ignored all the allegations and everything and just went on that I didn't do this and um, didn't go on with anything, with any of the allegations. She just, just sang. That's all it was. So, yeah, it was pretty sad. And it, it, it was pretty funny, though, I would say. It was by far one of the craziest responses ever on YouTube. But she definitely does not deserve any sort of platform if she has a response like that because it seems that she didn't take it seriously at all. And I don't think anyone should agree that this is a serious response because it's not. It's 
a terrible response. Probably as worse as the next person. Actually, not really. Close. But, anyways, moving on. Yes, she definitely deserves to be on the spot of being a pedophile and still having a platform. And I think she still is uploading to this day, which is still crazy to me. And should not be a thing. And I really do think that she should be terminated from YouTube. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for, the person that absolutely does not deserve any platform is Minilad. Now, I'm probably going to sound biased, and I understand, but I absolutely like despise Minilad because of the shit that he did before, the most crucial shit he did, and obviously the allegations of him sexually talking with a minor, like inappropriate conversations with a minor. Now... Before, what he did is he actually used to alienate his old friends, which he was part of the Vanos crew, a group that I admire and, you know, support because they're the reasons that, you know, I decided that I want to do YouTube and, you know, play video games and everything. So, and he was definitely one of the top five up there on the crew, but he later moved on as a solo and started talking shit behind their backs, seeing that they were pieces of shit to him. And start talking shit, saying like they blocked him on everything so he has no idea what they're doing. Making them seem like the horrible people. But it was later proven not true from Terrorizer specifically. And there was a long beef with them too, Minilad and Terrorizer. And there was obviously different sides. People sided with Minilad, people sided with Terrorizer. But mostly, Terrorizer mostly debunked many of the claims and everything. And making him show that many lad was just being a mani manipulative liar and a piece of shit and he all he really did was just lie to his fans especially one part when vanos one of vanos's concert many lad was there and a uh, terrorizer and i don't know what many was thinking but he later made a video talking about sort of that part where he's sorting things out with Terrorizer and, you know, working things on, trying to make uh, the relationship better. But Terrorizer later proved that they aren't on good terms or anything, and he was actually lying. So, that's another thing. He lied to his fans. He was being a massive liar. And also, when the massive allegations came out, he started sort of deflecting or trying to defend himself by saying that he was dealing through some mental health problems. Okay, so I understand that people out there deal with mental health stuff. But just because you deal with some shit like that doesn't mean that you're allowed to do horrible shit to other people. There's a certain point in time when if you are dealing with mental health problems, you need to go get some help. That doesn't mean that you should go pry on other people that are you know, too young and vulnerable because they see you as someone that they admire to you. And Mini Lad just fell through that, I guess, because he was exposed from two victims, Hallie and Ashley, that he was inappropriately texting them or having inappropriate conversations with them when they were 17, 16, and he was over 21. So, yeah, he basically fumbled the bag with everything and did one of the worst things you could ever do as a YouTuber and as a human being. And somehow... He did have two responses. The first one wasn't even a response. It was absolute dog shit. And was just bringing up claims that weren't even a big thing. Or not a big thing, but weren't even the main claims. There were just some random other claims from people. And the second one, he sort of responded to it. But was mostly trying to seem like the victim in some way. Because he was bringing up some shit of him being suicidal. Which, okay, what's the point of you text, like texting minors inappropriately? What's the where Where was that from, like... So is that your reason on why you wanted to text minors? I don't understand that. But later on, after he made those two... Actually, before that... Uh, I want to bring up the fact that he didn't care because after he made the first one, he started making videos like everything was normal. But people called him out on his bullshit and he had to make another response. But after that, he went on a break and then later came back and tried to come back as if everything was normal again and try to revive his channel. But it didn't work because now he only gets a few thousand subs or a few thousand views, my bad, and has been losing subs every every time, like every week, every month. He has been losing thousands of subs and has gone from like 5 point something million to 4.8 or something. So yeah, it's it's crazy. But it's still crazy to me how he still has a platform, I would say. And especially since he tries to sort of still make himself look like the victim because many people, like his old friends, have been sort of trying to like making fun of him or whatever. How, like, 
uh, reacting to old uh, mini lad clips or something and just making fun of him. And he tries to make himself like, like make himself look like we should feel bad for him when I really, I'm really not. I really shouldn't. What did you expect with something like this? People are going to clown you forever now after some shit like this. You will never have a break over it and you won't ever revive a channel or any reputation or any career after some shit like this. It's disgusting and it's inexcusable and there's no second chances after that. There are some second chances on some things, but this is by far not one of them. So, Minilad is definitely one of the people up there that do not deserve any platform at all and should have his channel terminated, I would say. And I may sound biased, I understand, but I just absolutely despise him because he's constantly trying to make himself look like the victim when he's not. He made people victims. He's the one that's the, he's the culprit of everything. And someone that still somehow still has a channel and someone that does not deserve a channel because who knows something it may not be possible but one day he may do it again if they've done it once they might do it again but that's all i really have to say for mini lad definitely one of the people that i despise the most and that does not deserve a channel at all one of the most annoying and one of the most irritating and one of the most shittiest people out there i would say that does not deserve any reputation or any career, my bad. Not career, I guess, any platform anywhere. So that way he, can, he can't he can ever communicate with any kids at all. Because he fumbled the bag and does not deserve any platform. So, Mini Lad, if one day you ever watch this shit, do us all a favor and delete your fucking channel. And don't come back. Move on and go do some shit. Because, obviously, you're never going to prison. You're never going to jail. That's never happening. But if you want to, if you actually do care about your fans and do care about the victims and try to apologize to them, even though you aren't sorry, you're just trying to make sure, make yourself look better. If you want to do us all a favor, just delete your fucking channel and don't come back. Go back and go work at a fucking CVS, like fucking EDP or some shit. Anyways, that concludes mostly all of the people that I wanted to talk about. I know there are other people that I probably should have mentioned, maybe some examples like Aiden Ross or Neon, but... That might be a conversation for another time. Anyways, I would say these are all the people that are absolutely awful. And I understand not everyone, obviously, in this list is a pedophile, obviously. Illuminati, obviously, Sniper Wolf, Jack Doherty. Those people are not pedophiles, I understand that. And I'm not trying to compare them to the pedophiles or, like, Sneeko. I'm not. They are just awful people that I would say don't deserve any platform. Because they're just awful. They aren't people they aren't good people they aren't grateful for what they have any fan that they had all they care is about themselves and they don't deserve any platform i would say but people like sneeko or also the three pedophiles i know sneeko is not a pedophile i'm not trying to compare him with them but they absolutely do not deserve any platform because they did the worst crime possible which was talk inappropriately to minors but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this long video. I understand if I got some things wrong. Let's say, for example, the claims I had with Illuminati. I understand if I got those wrong. And feel free to correct me with anything or add any evidence or anything to bring up on any allegations of any of the people. Uh, feel free to do any of that. But I just want to make this video because I've been wanting to make a video sort of like this. Just sort of expo not really exposing, but just talking about YouTubers that I absolutely despise. That still have a platform somehow and have done horrible crimes, I would say. Obviously not Jack Doherty. He's probably the lesser piece of shit because he's a dick and he's an asshole and he's just like annoying and ignorant and arrogant. But he's not as bad as the other people that I've mentioned. Anyways, that concludes mostly everything I want to say for all these YouTubers. And I just wanted to say... I don't understand what's so hard of not talking to minors, honestly. It's uh, what's so hard about not talking to minors. Like, literally 75% of the world are over the age of 18 and 25% are fucking kids. Leave the kids alone. Let them have, let them live a happy life until they're adults. Leave them alone, please. Just leave them alone. That's all I ask for, for YouTubers specifically. And there are some streamers out there, but specifically these people. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed my video i know it's really long but i just want to make a video like this just calling out on people's bullshit specifically the youtubers hope you enjoyed i'll see you in the next time i'll see you next time i bet i don't know why i keep saying that i'll see you next time whatever it will be see you